Yes. Uh, this is for Ashland. So I, I also attended A State just a few years prior to you, probably. Uh, and I know at least when I was there, they kind of had the arch as the go to spot. This is where you should go, uh, whether it was student government association elections, uh, but it was kind of the known like if you're going to go say something, you should probably go over there area. And I know religious organizations that showed up probably was the same when you were there, you know who I'm thinking of. But at the same time, you can also remember back in the student union, registered student organizations have always been allowed to spill their propaganda uh, at their tables because they were the selected registered student organizations that were allowed to do so. And so as I listen to your story, and I'm I'm somewhat familiar with your backstory because I worked at the university uh, prior to coming to law school, and so um, I look at that and I feel like in your instance it was you were being singled out because you weren't a selected registered student organization because it's allowed. Yeah, they're there, and it's specifically who they let and who they don't. Well, I appreciate that. It's a little nice to have a little validation from somebody who was there as well. You know, one of the parts we have in this legislation talks about being legally on campus. So if you're legally on campus, uh, then you're covered under this bill. Uh, you know, just like I think y'all, you mentioned that the lady from Turning Point was escorted off campus and told she can't come back for whatever period of time. So there is a designation of being legally on campus and not legal, as you as an officer there remember. You know, when I was at ASU a while, it was when streaking was popular. Y'all might not know when that is, but they allowed streaking, and the, the president of the university said, look, here's your streaking streak, here's your streaking day, and here's the manner in which you're going to streak. And they allowed that. So this idea that you can't, uh, they can't control things, yeah, I just don't buy. I buy that they are choosing not to do that. And again, this law is so important because it needs to give guidance and some clarity to what it is. Yeah, I forget the, the, the topic we went through. We were talking about something happening. What is, if you violate the, the, camp, the uh, running for office, the campaigning statute, what's the recourse for a student to appeal that? Is there one? You mean within the student government? Well, if, they, if, if Ashland's yeah. story is correct, where yeah. some How student you, was so they could do it in your room. What do you do? They couldn't do it in her room. What, what do you do? I don't remember. I, I believe there's a process, but I don't remember what it is. I think I think it goes to the, as the Student Government Honor Council for uh, hearing, and that's happened. It has gone. I believe that's the next step. Yeah, and nobody, everybody feels very comfortable going filing a grievance? There have been multiple. They, and yeah. students are comfortable going to do that, you think? You don't have one. You don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the problem is, that, that, to me, my view, is is that what is all this bureaucracy? What is all this process? Well, you can file a petition so that you can have your views thought, uh, heard. How about just having your views heard? You know, how, how crazy of an idea in all of these elaborate rules. The Soviets were great with coming up with rules and five-year plans. I don't need either one of those, frankly. Um, and I'll share my views because they're my views. And I'll show, share them in the appropriate time, place, and manner. Um, and so it just, it strikes me as so much extra bureaucracy. Because again, academia breeds this notion of expertise and, and we'll set the rules and there's too much of that. And you know who actually sets the rules? The legislature. And you know why? Not because they're the smartest, not because uh, they have the most power, because we put them there. And ultimately, it's we who make that decision. We don't like Dan Sullivan's actions. Vote the bums out. That's what we do. Um, and in fact, I campaigned for Dan for his, against his opponent um, for that very reason. I didn't like what he was doing. I campaigned for um, John Payton uh, because he ran against the fellow who was uh, not sufficiently pro-free speech in my mind. I might have gotten one or two votes, maybe not that many, but that's how democracy works. And democracy falls apart without the ability to have free speech. Yeah, I need, since we're on 